were looking on uh, uh, wealthy transfer and financial freedom. And I want you to capture this, uh, uh, to capture this uh, message before we will leave it. I want you to be grounded. I want you to be uh, uh, rooted. I want you to be established um, in this truth because it is fundamental. It's very fundamental on your life. And you cannot separate um, the, the need for resources from your spiritual growth or from your spiritual transformation. Because uh, what we are dealing is a really a holistic, is a holistic uh, a message or a holistic approach to the word of God. Because the word of God is meant to holistically impact your life. Not one dimension. And that's why the church went wrong over many years. And especially the Pentecostal churches, they only concentrated on spiritual matters and directing people to heaven. Of course, that is the most important thing and, and we are all going to go to heaven. But it's not the only important thing. It's very important to focus to the heaven. But that's not the only important thing. Okay? Because if God wanted us to belong to heaven, I have always said we could have been created like angels. But God created angels as spirits. But when it came to human beings, he created them in his own image and he gave them a body. Amen? And he placed them on the earth so that they can be able to rule on the earth and subdue the earth. So if his delight was only for you to go to heaven, he could have made you as an angel, but God made you as a human being and gave you time and season to be on the earth on a purpose. Praise God. And that's why it's very important that while you are still on the earth and you have not yet gone to heaven, you are able to live in alignment to God's will and to God's purpose. And, uh, and so we are saying uh, one of the reasons for you to be able to fulfill God's ordained purpose and also to live your life in accordance to God's will, in accordance to God's designed uh, purpose, it's important that you have understanding on the matters of wealthy uh, transfer and financial freedom on matters of natural resources that you must need in this life. So that's very critical and very, very important. And um, remember I said, uh, uh, God will, uh, why God, we're well, looking at the reasons why God gives us wealthy transfer. Why should we believe God as believers for wealthy transfer? Why should we have this as a major concern? That God should transfer wealth, that we should walk in the transfer wealth, that the wealthy should be transferred to us as God's sons. So that's what, those are the things we want to lay a foundation and then discover. Why should we walk in wealthy transfer and financial freedom? So um, one of the reasons that we began building up, we said um, as sons of God or new creation believers, we must understand it's God's will that we walk in financial wealthy and financial prosperity. Now, I, last time I was trying to put these points and I want you to... Uh, understand these uh, four or five points as we go on, we'll see. But number one, we want to realize that one of the reasons is that because we are sons of God, just because we are sons of God, it is important that we, we, we understand or we walk in financial transfer because we are sons of God. Amen? And, he, he, uh, uh, and because we are sons of God, we deserve to have financial freedom, we deserve to walk in this a wealthy transfer. We want, we want, we deserve to walk in a wealthy status of our father. It is just very logical that even if you come from a well-being family, well family, uh, socially, financially, and well cultured and well educated, you 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 you, you deserve to to resemble the family where you come from, isn't it? And. Uh, the same thing should, should be applying to us. Wouldn't people see if they come and see, uh, uh, let me say, Sudidi's children, or maybe his excellency, the president of Uganda's children, on the street begging, circumventing, wouldn't people marvel? Definitely they would marvel. They would say something is wrong with the son of the president because he has everything. The same thing to us. I believe in the realm of the spirit, we are causing a marvel when devils and angels see you wallowing in a certain 
uh, level that is not men. I think angels are saying, what's wrong with these people? They can't even understand it. And even the demons themselves, they must be just having, you know, smiles and laughing over because they don't expect you to be like a beggar when you belong to your father. So, because we are sons of God, it's one of the reasons that God will grant us the transfer of wealthy and grant us financial freedom and financial, uh, financial uh, prosperity. So, if we are sons of God, it's important that we begin to understand the nature of our father and we also understand, we understand our, our fatherhood who is in heaven. Okay? And also understand our sonship identity. That's very important. Understanding our fatherhood. That's why when, uh, when Jesus was teaching his disciples to pray, he said, whenever you come to pray, first say, our father who art in heaven. So what Jesus is trying to do is to bring you in understanding of your relationship with your father which is in heaven. So he's teaching them how to pray. Say, okay, whenever you come to pray, just say, our father who art in heaven. Okay, Matthew 6, 9, thank you. In this manner, therefore, pray, our father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So he wants to get their attention and their lives. Come on, you disciples, you are not orphans. You have a father which is in heaven. And if you get to know this father who is in heaven, that he's everything, he's God, he's almighty, he's powerful, he's glorious, he's rich, he's wealthy, he's loving, he's everything and all things. That should change your whole perspective. Just if you are a son today, your relationship, your father determines a lot of your behavior. Yeah? Those who are coming from very wealthy fathers or families, they brag around. They go to school with cars when others are just footing. Miles and miles. There are some schools where you go to the university. I saw some of them coming for graduation uh, just flying in. Just to... A girl just picks a plane and flies to go and put on her gown. And she walks out to the, you know, with all the airs and all the cameras are focused and all the medias are capturing. An ordinary girl who just took a flight. But you know, if she's coming from a, a rich father, this is not a big do. As the world, as other people are saying. Assuming all people were taking flights to God, do you think everybody would be a mesmerized? Definitely not. But she makes a great air right? because she's unique and she's displaying a certain glory. And of course, some people say she must be proud. But even if she's the humblest person, they will say she's what? She's proud because she has done something that is out of ordinary. But then, uh, not yeah, to, to step into places of dignity as sons of God because people are going to say you are proud. Because what is important is not what the people, people's judgment over you, but your attitude and your heart and what God sees in your heart. So go for it. Don't let people press you down for no good reason. Uh, reach out to the dimension that you, you are able to the heights that God can take you through revelation, through knowledge, through understanding, and through your faith. Praise God. Let them talk. Let them judge you. But their judgment has nothing to do with God's purpose and God's will and God's plan. Actually, God becomes happy when he sees you understanding who you are. He's happy. He, just even in the natural. A, a father, when you see your son or your daughter is mature, in reason. Gives you a certain confidence and pride. But when you see them behaving like baby forever, they, sh they bring shame and doesn't honor. 
So the same thing here. So Jesus says, when you come to pray, say our Father who art in heaven. Because he wants to attract your understanding that you have a Father which is in heaven. Okay? And now when you go to start the more of your Father who is in heaven, you discover he owns heaven, he owns the earth, he owns everything. Then your story changes. Then you begin to have confidence because you have a Father. And I pray that even by after today, your personal connection and relationship with your Father who is in heaven is going to be more intimate and more strong. And this message brings a stronger bond between you and your Father, which is in heaven. Amen? Uh, John 1, 12, 13. Sealing on that. Uh, John, the Gospel of John, chapter 1, 12, 13. Let me try to put in speed because I know time is going to catch me up. As many that believed in his name, uh, he gave the power or the right to become children of God. Those who believe in his name. So as many that believed, as many that received him, as many that received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. Those who believe in his name. So the moment you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, at your moment of confession, something that turned you a son of God or a, a child of God happened. You are not yourself anymore. You are not as ordinary as you think you are. You are a son of God. You are a child of God. Did you believe on the Lord Jesus? Did you receive him as your, as your Lord and personal Savior? I want to tell you, if you say yes, then I want to tell you that you are a child of God. You are a son of God. God is your father. God in the heaven is your father by your spiritual birth. Okay? So go to verse 13. By your second birth, by your spiritual birth, right? You became a child of God and this is who you are. It's just not a good word in the Bible. This is the truth. Amen. It's the truth, somebody. Walk out from a certain place of wallowing as if you, are, you have no father, you have no care, you are struggling by yourself. No. You have a father. And he loves you so dearly, by the way. He would go an extra mile that he would give up his only one son to die in your place until you are redeemed. To die in your place until your sins are forgiven. To die in, in your place so that you are reconciled back at your father. One of the things that Jesus did by his death on the cross is to reconcile you. To bring you back in that relationship with God. Amen? And so who were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh. So you are not born in this birth, spiritual birth, by the will of man. No, this is not a natural birth. This is a spiritual birth. You are not born of the will of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. You are born of God. Amen. Hallelujah. You are born of God. So this is very important. Understand your second birth, your spiritual birth. Understand and walk in understanding of your spiritual birth. And begin to have your birthright privileges. And you take advantage of your spiritual birth status. You are a child of God. You are born again. Are you hearing me? You are born again. It is the truth. It cannot be undone. You are born again. As long as Jesus is Lord in your heart. Praise God. As long as you have accepted him to be your savior. You are born again. You are born of God. You are not an ordinary man any longer. Praise God. Now the Bible says in 2 Corinthians, I think somewhere, chapter number 5, uh, maybe verse 17, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he has become a new creation. All the things have all passed away and hold. everything has become new. Okay? So, uh, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. All the things have all passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So forget all the troubles and the failures and witchcraft and sorceries of your family and the uh, wizardry and all those kind of things the night dancing with your parents forget about that stuff come on and walk out with boldness and confidence enter into this beautiful splendid life that God has secured for you through his own dear son he has purchased you by the blood of his son Jesus he has bought you back to be redeemed means to buy back again he has redeemed you from the curse. He has redeemed you from poverty. He has redeemed you from misery. He has redeemed you from all the bloodline curses. I feel like slapping somebody. 
Hallelujah. Mother Lord, inject this truth into you and you begin to enjoy your new status through Christ Jesus. Enjoy your birthright as a son of God. And today, yes, the two years past, you are saved, but you are just walking like a blind person. I pray the eyes of your understanding be uh, open today in the name of Jesus. As you perceive and understand your spiritual birth, praise God. And that changes everything around you. Your tomorrow is better than your past because of the revelation that is coming upon you by discovering your fatherhood um, uh, relationship by discovering your sonship identity it places you in a complete different position praise God we will all come from very bad conditions nobody should laugh on any other but I thank God for what God has done for us I was lost now I'm found praise God we were all lost we came from very bad background lost families poor families wrecked families sinful families gift of his spirit who has been given to live in you, to dwell in you, to remind in you, to abide in you forever. Praise God. Now once the Holy Spirit is in you, working a work of regeneration, working a work of change, working a work of transformation continually as you come to church, as you pray, as you fast, as you worship, as you read and study the word, as you witness to others, the Holy Spirit is changing you and making you more and more like God and making you more and more like him in all areas of your life. Amen? And so now the Bible says, as many who are laid, now your sonship, you, you grow in the knowledge, you grow in understanding of your sonship identity. So some people are, yes, they got saved, they hear about their sonship identity, but they have not grown in understanding to their sonship identity. So they are not being led by the Holy Spirit, and therefore the devil is taking advantage. Because they, are, they never are led by the Holy Spirit. So they don't enjoy the privileges of the kingdom. Because for you to enjoy these privileges and benefits that belong into the kingdom of your father, God, you must continually be led by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Now, as many who are led by the Holy Spirit, these are sons of God. Now, go to the next verse quickly. Okay, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again. I feel like somebody being slapped here. Come on. Oh, there's sometimes the gospel becomes too sweet. Praise God. You did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. Amen. Stop fearing what you should not fear. You are a new brand creature. You are a son of God. You are not born of this earthly dimension. You are born from above. Whatever is born of God, overcome the world. And this is our victory that overcome the world. Even our faith, somebody give Jesus some praise in the house. Glory! Hallelujah! Come on, hallelujah! Ooh, glory to God! Don't fear again! Amen! So there are many things that can bring fear today. You are fearing to die, but you better believe because of your father in heaven he has given you life. He has given you different gifts. He has given you healing. He has given you prosperity. He has given you uh, joy. He has given you peace. He has given you goodness. He has given you all the fruit. Not only the gifts of the Holy Spirit, but all the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He has given you love. He has given you patience in your heart. Amen. He has given you gentleness. He has given you faithfulness. Glory to God. So don't fear what the world 
can, is, can do to you. Be strong in the Lord. Don't fear how shall, what shall I eat? How am I going to survive? Where will the tuition come from? What kind of a man shall I marry? And what kind of a woman will marry me? Oh, shall I? But even shall I marry? Oh, you are fearing everything. But don't fear because the spirit that you have received is not a spirit of fear. To be in bondage again. Don't let the devil ensnare you. Don't let the devil put you in any bondage. It is well with your soul. Hamina, it's well with your destiny. Convince yourself, this is well with my soul. Come on, give Jesus some praise in the house. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You receive the spirit of adoption. Ooh. Amen. I'm hearing. The spirit of adoption is the spirit that makes you to become a son of God. So you have received the spirit of adoption. No, the spirit of adoption walks through the grace of God. Grace is undeserved. Is unmerited. You do nothing. You don't pay money to become a son of God. No. It is the spirit of adoption who does that. He takes all the responsibility of making you, you are a son of God. He does the whole process of making, transforming you and, and convincing you and convicting you and bearing witness deep in your heart that I'm truly born of God. Hey, amen. That is the work of the Holy Ghost. He persuades you. Amen. He convicts you. He persuades you. He bears witness to your spirit. Hey. You are born again. And you want to make some errors and to say words which others are saying. The Holy Ghost says, don't say that. That's not your place. You want to do something that's not right. The Holy Ghost says, don't do that. That is for the people who are not of God. That's for those who are not born again. You are a minister. You are a child of God. Don't go there. Don't do that. Be strong. You are not going to die. I'm with you. I'll be with you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Hallelujah. Give Jesus some praise. Amen. Yeah, he convinces you until he persuades you and captures your heart. And now a smile comes in your face. Hope, destiny, or purpose begin to fill your heart. Now you walk out of despair. And you know, that's why we are changing people. That's why they don't understand us. They look at us. They say, who are these? We are happy people. Praise God. They look at us. Who are these? We are rich people. They look at us. Somebody called me this morning. People say, because you go to lift up Jesus Church, you are rich. Bishop gives you money. So she's, they can't, she said, they can't chase me because they think if they chase me, Bishop is going to take me completely. And they believe you have money. I said, yes. For the glory of God. Give Jesus some praise. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> uh, I give Jesus some praise but these are kingdom benefits this is what you receive when you enter in this kingdom amen amen he restores my soul amen ah, hallelujah the Lord is my shepherd are you hearing somebody singing a, a beautiful melody the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want Psalm 23 is there praise God amen the Lord is who I shall not. Uh huh. Go on, come on quickly. He makes me to do what? Where? Enjoy. He leads me where? Drink. Uh huh. He restores and leads me. Uh huh. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you hearing that? Because you know who you are. Amen. I'll fear no evil for you are with me. And your road and your stuff, they comfort me. Your road and your word, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And I can assure you, if you hang on to the truth of this, God's going to give you victory among all your enemies that rage and rise and pursue you. This is the truth. Victory is yours. I repeat, victory is whose? Victory is whose? I repeat, victory is whose? God will give you victory in the face of your enemies. I pity your enemies because they are all going to become a non-existent thing. 
those who are pursuing you, those who are incensed against you, you look behind and see none of them. It is not possible for them to outwit you because the Lord shall give you victory. He leads you, he grants you victory, prepares a table before your enemies in Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. Come on, shout hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. He prepares a table. Your enemies are about to see your radiancy. Your enemies are about to see your shining. Your enemies are about to see your promotion. Your enemies are about to see your prosperity. Your enemies are about to see your forward movement. Your enemies are about to see a card inviting them on your wedding. Your enemies are about to see you now not walking or struggling again, but in your car driving. Your enemies are about to come and find you seated in places of honor, in places of dignity, and say, How did he reach here? God has lifted you up. He rises the poor from the ash heap and he sits them with the kings, with the princes. Get ready. This is your season of elevation in Jesus mighty name. Somebody shout a big amen. Come on shout again a big amen. amen. Hallelujah. Your enemies are going to be embarrassed by your promotion, by your success, by your increase, by your establishment, by your prosperity. Hallelujah. By your open doors. Come on, I'm talking to somebody. Come on, give Jesus some praise. <laughs> he prepares you a, a table before your enemies. Ah, oh, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 I say the Lord prepares a table before your enemies. In the name of Jesus Christ. By this word, your enemies go down. And by this word, you go up in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh yes, absolutely true in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 I command the backing on the word I have spoken by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. That every enemy pursuing your future, pursuing your destiny comes down in Jesus' name. Everyone set against life against your future against your marriage against your prosperity against your finances against your increase against your favor against your dignity comes down in the power of a name which is above the other names everybody shouted and said amen to the glory and the praise of jesus Listen, when you discover your sonship identity, the story of your life changes. Somebody show us I'm a son of God. Come on, speak as though you believe. I'm a son of God. Can I hear people face shouting louder? I am a son of God. Listen to me. The devil does not want you to understand this. Demons don't like you to discover your sonship identity. He knows he has lost a battle. The moment you discover the truth of your true sonship identity, there is a knowing it, but there is understanding it and walking in it. No devil in hell wants you to understand your sonship identity. One of the greatest things that will give you mileage is your revelation in knowledge and understanding and discovery of your sonship identity. That slaps every devil in the face. Because he knows now that one I can no longer manage. No, he can't lie you again. He will stop all his lies. He's the father of all lies. He will stop his lies in your heart. And you'll have escaped like a bird that comes out of a trap. And there was no now that one has escaped. And we can't find them anymore. Because their lives are now hidden somewhere. Oh, you understand me? Their lives are hidden in Christ. I can't catch them up again. I cannot catch up with them again. Hallelujah. <laughs> they have escaped out of my camp. And their lives are now hidden somewhere. Where I cannot reach. 
That's why he never wants you to discover your sonship identity. But because he doesn't want you to discover your sonship identity, I preach to you your sonship identity. I reveal this truth to you. I unveil this mystery upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. The more he doesn't want you to understand, the more I make you to understand your true sonship identity in Jesus' name. Shout a big amen. amen. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, the devil would have never wanted me alive so that I don't preach this truth and he would have never wanted you alive so that you hear this and he would have never wanted you to come to church to hear this thank God that you came John chapter number 5 verse 17 18 I'll show you something here Now, one of the things that happened that made devils crazy on Jesus is when Jesus declared that he's a son of God. The moment Jesus said, I am a son of God, hell broke loose. If any one of you here start to understand, hell shall break loose. Because devils don't want you to know that you are a son of God. He wants you to stay religious in the church. He wants you to just go and belong to a certain organiz religious organization. But he doesn't want you to enter in your father relationship. This is liberating truth. And the more he can keep you in the darkness, the more he will cause you to suffer. You feel ashamed. You feel alone. You feel forsaken. You feel poor, you feel struggling, you feel everything is not working for you. That's what he wants. He knows that the moment you understand your father relationship, joy, peace, hope, sense of destiny, and prosperity comes upon you. Your mindset changes. Now he can't manage. Because he keeps you down through ensnaring your mindset, giving you a religious mindset. Giving you a mindset of poverty. Giving you a mindset of people who cannot make it in life. But Jesus answered to them said, My father has been working until now and I've been working. Now Jesus got changed by cultivating a stronger father-son relationship. Are you hearing me? What changed Jesus and empowered him for victory all the years, 33 years he lived on the earth is his discovery of his father and son relationship. It changed Jesus' ministry. It changed Jesus' life on a daily basis. And he understood that as long as he walks with the father, victory is his. That one Jesus knew it. And listen, this is just this is the truth. Even, even in naturally, in our own natural life, in our earthly life, any son, any child who has a very close, intimate relationship with the father, they will still enjoy different families. True story. Any child today. Some of you are still younger, but when you get children, then you will understand what I'm talking about. That some children will enjoy better privileges because of their relationship with you. The biological father. There are, there, are, there are children whom a father is thinking about, even if they didn't say anything. But they can't run away from their mind. That is called power of favor. Are you hearing? Even in the church, even the spiritual fatherhood. Like you are all in this church, but from me, you don't share equal, equal rights and privileges. I can tell you the truth. I know it. Because of the levels of, of loyalty. 
there are those who are more loyal and they will take the portion look at the children of Israel do you think they all got equal portions huh? find when when Israel was blessing them did they bless did he bless them with equal words one day we shall go there no those who misbehaved he said because you lied on the bed of you this is your lord but because you are like this this is your lord and i speak by experience because i am a father spiritual i have raised so many sons and daughters but i know all my sons and daughters i talk different language with each one of my son and daughter they are all sons they are all daughter but we don't speak equal language when i'm with son a i speak certain words there are those sons that intimidate your spirit you don't or access into them and you are careful you walk with them but careful because they give you no access you admit that they are sons and of course they are sons because even a rebellious son is still a what even a prodigal son is still a what yes true story So now Jesus became one of the most example of a person that understood father son identity and relationship. That made Jesus who you see him. Did you remember when he came from the water after being baptized as a voice came from on high. This is my son in whom I'm what? in whom i am well pleased yes this is the pride the father heart of jesus this is my son and suddenly a voice matthew 3 17 saying this is my beloved son are you a beloved son of your biological father are you a beloved fa uh, son or daughter of your spiritual father Are you a beloved son of your father which is in heaven the other day I told a story of Apostle Frank when he went back after the conference and they gave him five acres he will tell you when he comes free land in Kampala that's amazing five acres but the first thing is he called me and you see when he calls me he says that I say yeah I'm determined I am going to serve you with all my heart the remaining days of my life and I will serve your God you see what do I have to do with five acres of his land I come in the picture because he's understanding this blessing has come to me by my loyalty to my father. When we were blessing him, my wife said, okay, you have done your part. Every time you have come and gone back, you've given us a testimony. We are waiting to hear that testimony. Go in peace. And that changes the story of the man. The people that gave him five acres of land, he doesn't know them. He has never seen them. But the power of blessing, the power of blessing of a father is more than somebody that gives you money. But there are some people that set off for silver and gold, set off for stuff that are perishable. And they give up their birthright inheritance. There are some people that exchange their birthright, like Esau's story. Are you hearing? For soup. I pray for you that you don't give up your birthright for what is more precious, for what is only temporal. 
Jacob said, swear to me as of this day. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. He sold up his birthright to Jacob. But for what? Give us the scripture. Because of a soup. He was too hungry when he came. He says, give me your soup. I give you my birthright. And he went back to his father who, who gives the birthright, the inheritance. And the father says, I have already blessed your brother. I cannot take away the blessing. It's not possible. Please feed me with that same red stew, for I am weary. Therefore, his name was called Edom. So give me your soup. And I give you my birthright. What do you want more? What do you want more? What do you want best? A soup or a blessing? Please. Those are the things when you are working in a relationship that should be your concern. Don't just be narrow-minded. Look at your destiny ahead. And begin to watch over your future. Don't eat your future today. That man drank the soup. He drank his future at that bowel of a soup. And never would he ever recover it. So, wise people who are growing to understand the things we are talking. Just look into a long future. Look at your 20 years. Begin to build it today. By all these levels of your relationship with your father. Even the biological father. Some of them are wicked. Some of them are bad. Some of them are going to treat you badly. But you don't ever, ever, ever try to respond in the same way. They, they, they will miss you. They, they, will, they don't know God. They don't fear God. They don't love your God. They will even persecute you. They will even do mistreat you. Yes. They will do all those things. But they are your father. Still love them and still honor them and still respect them it shall be well with you never come in cross with them your biological father but even us your spiritual fathers and i have to tell you this because some of you ruin your destiny by sitting only just in that chair and you nurse an attitude that even i don't know you just nurse it in your heart but heaven sees that and a disconnection happens and a spiritual inheritance does not transfer or is not transmitted. You see, by the time a prophetic word comes from this altar to you, there must be a connection in heaven to, your, to, the, to the man on the altar and to your spirit. Then you can know there is a flow of favor. And that favor is what brings preferential treatment. That favor. You don't do anything. That favor opens door. That favor causes your father to give you what others cannot receive. Please. This is how we can go into, I can't lie you, because you might just work very hard and never progress. And you say, why am I working very hard but earning nothing? Why am I laboring too much and I don't see increase? But those are some of the things that limit your increase. Because we are talking about transfer of wealthy and financial freedom. Keep your favor with your father, biological father or mother. It shall be well with you. Keep your relationship and loyalty with your spiritual father on the earth. Keep your loyalty with your father who is in heaven. I love Apostle Frank. He said, I'm going to serve you and serve your God. Now suppose he didn't add the part I serve your God. I could have possibly felt uncomfortable. I will serve you and I will serve you are God because he knows without bowing and serve the authority of God on my life me as a man I lose your skills I have nothing to impart on this man that is supernatural you understand 
I have no glory of my own that I can pass over to any man. But if I'm to boast of any glory, I can only boast in him. Because I am what I am only by his grace. So a man must understand that. Somebody must understand that and our time is gone. Uh, let me just say as we close here write these other points possibly uh, I will not be around uh, I will be traveling next weekend to Chigali I will be traveling to Kampala we have consecration uh, of Bishop uh, Odong in Kampala and uh, I have a revival conference in Rwanda but when we come back we shall continue but this uh, we were still dealing, dealing on one point of uh, uh, we are sons of God. That's why we have to believe God for transfer wealth. Number two, it is God's will. It's God's will for you to prosper. I will seal with the scripture there. So God your father is blessed, delights, takes pleasure in your prosperity. So never settle for something and think if you are poor then you will be humble like some people think. Actually pride and the wrong attitude. So number three I shared the brief knowledge. God is the source of everything. That is why we must reach out to dimensions of wealth and transfer and freedom and, and financial prosperity. Number four, wealthy and riches help in propagating the kingdom of God. You will become a propagator, an advancer of the kingdom of God, a preacher of the gospel. You will push the kingdom. You will cause the furtherance of the gospel if you are well positioned. And we look into many scriptures. That's why don't settle for average life hand to mouth level will never put you in a position of becoming a propagator of the gospel you must break beyond hand to mouth level you must always have what to to feed on and have what to do to, to give to god and for his work always and make sure you make god a priority in your financial decisions in your financial planning don't plan your thing alone put god in all that you plan to do. When you are setting goals, don't forget about God. Make him a priority. It's a secret. Some people are there saying, give me some money. Lord God, make me rich. Make me a billionaire. And God sees in all they have prayed for, they have not even mentioned nothing of him and of his kingdom. And the door doesn't open because you are too selfish oriented. You are not kingdom minded. You have no passion for advancing the kingdom of God. You have no desire to preach the gospel. Those are two different persons. One who says, Lord, make me a billionaire and a channel and a, of your kingdom, a channel of your gospel. I want to preach the gospel. I don't want your worker to stuck and he says and prays. And another one is here praying, Lord God, make me, give me more, give me more and I, I, I want this, I want that. They are two different. God will respond to them in two different ways. Absolutely. So that's very, very important. That once to understand that the reason God would transfer wealth upon you and give you financial prosperity or financial freedom is that you will propagate the kingdom of God. You will propagate the, uh, the gospel. You will preach the gospel. You will cause furtherance of the kingdom. The rulership of God. God wants the world to see his name. God want the kingdoms of these earth to become his kingdom through you. And that's why he must position you and give you influence. And give you dimension of greatness and supernatural wealth. Are you with me? We'll, we'll put scriptures on that. And number five. Wealthy and riches glorify God. So uh, I said when I was talking about the glory of God. Poverty is not synonymous with glory. God is Poverty actually disgraces and is a disgrace and a reproach. There's nothing that honors God in poverty. 
There's nothing that glorifies God in poverty. So poverty is, is not, does not glorify God. But riches and wealthy are synonymous of God's glory. Glory increases riches. Glory, when the glory of God is flowing in your life, the story starts to change. Even your look is different. Even, even your, your walk is different. Amen? The, we laughed in the hotel. I told the story. A man from Life Ministry who attended the conference in the stadium. He was at Chirijime Guest House where I stayed and they found him. Buried his hand. Worried because they were going to sell his house. Then when the conference was over, somebody called him. After they found him at Chirijime House, seated in a chair, lost in a world putting the head in his hands, somebody says, what happened? He says, I'm going through a problem. So the other one says, God will help you. He says, that's why I came believing God in this conference to answer me. Now, immediately the conference was over, they called him in Ibarara. And somebody counted money. Every needed to pay the whole loan they were demanding from him. And he had told us a story. He had invested all his money in the acres of vanilla. Now, before that, they stole all the vanilla was gone. He couldn't pay. He couldn't sell vanilla. It's gone. And the other people are taking a land which is taking many millions over just a few millions. But a person called him and gave him all the few millions. So when he went... He reached home from the conference. The wife saw him from a distance. And the wife said, my husband, what has happened? You see, mama is laughing because we have busted and laughed. Because he says, he laughed. We were in the hotel and forgot that we are before people. He almost collapsed down. Because he says, my wife saw the way I was walking. He knew something happened because my walking had changed <laughs> you see the, the, there is a place of breakthrough that happens and your walk gains a sense yes. you get you see when a man is confident you see them the way they are broomed and the way they are walking and the, the gentleness and the rest and the calmness around their containers it speaks volume but there is a person you look in the face and you see gloomy and you see rudeness and you see suffering and you see stress and you see pain and you see grief and you see sorrow and you want to be distanced. That anointing cannot bring favor. <laughs> are, are you hearing me? So that's why it's important that we begin to understand the things and then be able to tap in the blessing of God. Anyway, his walking changed. And I have a belief that uh, before we finish these messages, somehow, somewhere, your walking will change. In Jesus' name. <laughs> so wealthy and riches glorify God in your life. When people see your beauty and your dignity, and if they remember where God picked you from, if they can remember your background, if they can remember how you used to dress, are you with me? If they can remember how you used to go to school with a torn trouser, to, uh, a torn shirt or trousers on your buttocks, and now they see you driving, they will glorify God. They'll say, Really, God is great. Eh, Mazimam Kamano man. That is the girl who was looking so ugly and funny. But now behold the glory of God. Stand up on your feet in Jesus' name. Give Jesus a clap of praise. So those, those five points, I want them to be grasped on your fingertips as we move on. Amen. Why God ought to talk for wealthy and riches to you and give you financial freedom. Of course, as we, we are laying a foundation, we shall go deeper and begin to study about you know, other factors of financial management and uh, all those kind of things and planning and all those things as we journey on. Praise the Lord. 
Otherwise, the Lord can richly bless you and command a wealth of transfer upon you in the name of Jesus and give you favor that will grant you financial freedom and financial prosperity in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Yeah, uh, we are going to end this service here and I'm going also to give you opportunity. Um, we are going to for this service and the coming service, we are trying to raise up some money. We are starting a church in Ntungamo. Come, uh, Pastor Aidan, talk to us about that. Uh,